Okay, another uh, type of two-way table is one that has many variables. And so a two-way table um, does describe uh, categorical variables. And we re recognize, uh, we organize them by the row variables and the column variables. So in this case, the column variables is the gender. As you can see here, male and female. And the row variables are their feelings about whether they're going to be rich or not. Okay, and so those are the variables. The total number of adults that surveyed here will always be usually in the bottom right hand corner of your table is 4,826. So when we want to figure out um, how, uh, what the distribution of this data is, we call it a marginal distribution if we look at um, either one row or one column of data. And we usually do that via percents. Okay, So to get a marginal distribution, we use the data to calculate um, the percentages for each individual category and using the, the total of that category. And we sometimes then display the results in a graph. So here's an example, again, taking the data, um, comparing males and females to their feelings towards whether they're going to be rich or not. And if I want to look at the marginal distribution, which would be the total number of results here, I would look at, well, there was 194 um, students who said they had no, almost no chance out of a total of 4,826, and that comes out to be about 4%. And then there were 712 um, who felt they had some chance, but probably not, out of that same total of 4,826, so 14.8%. And I do that likewise for each of the categories. 50-50 chance was 29.3%, a good chance 29.4%, and almost certain is 22.4%. And then I translate that data into some sort of graph, usually a bar graph, um, works really well to show the percentages of that particular total. Uh, marginal distributions tell us nothing about the relationship between the two variables. So in this case, I know what the total percentage of each of the categories are, but I don't know what the breakdown between males and females are. A conditional distribution would be to look at those categories and compare them. And so we're looking at just one row or one column and calculating the percentages for each one. And then we make a graph and try to compare. If, for example, in this case, we're going to compare the males to the females using a side-by-side -side bar graph. So if you look here, you can see now that rather than looking at the totals, I'm actually looking at each of the columns here. So the females and the males. So the males I did first um, for each of the categories calculated how many males out of the total number of males. So 98 divided by 2,459 came out 4% um, for each of the categories and showed that in this table. I then did the same thing for the females and calculated what the percentages for each category was in the females. And notice the total here is a little bit different because I only have 2,367 females as part of my survey. And then I compared that graph using a side-by-side -side bar graph. And I can start to see some patterns like there's some differences in the males and females in the sum chance category and, um, where a lot of the other categories like the 50-50 chance and almost no chance there's no difference at all. Okay, and so this is an example of marginal and conditional distributions. Marginal distributions look at the total survey. Conditional distributions look at particular categories within that survey. And usually those are the more um, useful to us because it allows us to compare um, our groups, in this case comparing males to females, and with regards to their answers to their chances of being rich or not.